So not too long ago on the channel, we did a video ranking the Straw Hats based on how funny they are. And since then, I've been thinking another thing I want to call attention to is the funniest Straw Hat comedic groups. And you know what I'm talking about already, right? Which Straw Hats work the best comedically when they're together? So I've come up with five Straw Hat groups and I've ranked them based on how funny I think that they are. This is, of course, all my opinion, but I did a decent amount of research. <laughs> research. I just watched a bunch of One Piece. To decide which of these groups are the funniest. So sit back, relax, and let's go ahead and get into it. Actually, before we get started, we should probably have a quick word from our sponsors. This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. are both Japanese snack subscription boxes. And with Tokyo Treat, you can look forward to the latest exclusive limited edition and seasonal Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan. And Sakura Co. meanwhile is all about supporting local Japanese snack makers, so you can expect traditional and authentic Japanese snacks, including teas and tableware. It is soulmate season, baby, which means Valentine's Day is right around the corner. And what better way to celebrate than with Tokyo Treat's Be My Valentine? box. With this box, you'll be able to enjoy snacks like the Strawberry Shortcake Kit Kats, the Ichigo Moogie Puffs, and even Pokemon Candy Hearts. And as a matter of fact, the Caramel Taro Peanuts and Caramucho Spicy Chili Tomato Chips were personal favorites of mine. And Sakura Co. aims to celebrate the beauty of shared connections with its theme, Valentine's Indulgence. For this box, you can look forward to the Peach Doriaki, Mentai Mo Sinbei, and my absolute favorite snack from this box, and maybe any box, the Ume Rinkan Chips. And of course, you'll want to try all of this with the Coco Sencha Tea, which you'll receive with the Sakura Co box as well. And the tableware item for this month is going to be the Kiko plate or Firefly plate. As a passionate enjoyer of romantic stories and someone with an endless interest in Japan, I was thrilled to look through these booklets that came with each box. And after reading each booklet, I was able to walk away with not only a better understanding of Japanese culture, but also a deeper appreciation for the tender traditions that define this romantic season in another part of the world. And as always, you're able to look at any allergy information you need as well. So if you're like me and you want to taste all of this for yourself, or if you want to give a really nice gift for someone you love, please check out the link in the description and use code Mugiwara to receive $5 off your first Tokyo Treat or Sakura Co. box. A very special thank you to Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. for sponsoring this video, and an equally special thank you to you for watching this video. And with that, we are back to the show. Are you, are you back yet? Did you did you have a quick word with our sponsors? Awesome, let's go ahead and get this started. Now, before we get started with the actual list that I've created, I wanna go ahead and knock out some honorable mentions. And the first honorable mention that I just had to put on here, that's gotta be Law with the Straw Hats. Law with the Straw Hats is hilarious. He works best when he's with Luffy, I think. Like, every time Law has a plan, it, just, it doesn't matter when Luffy's around. It doesn't matter. Every single plan that you make, it's not gonna matter when that crackhead shows up and just starts punching people in the face. But he works well with other Straw Hats too like law and chopper they're a good duo chopper is low-key like he's hilarious actually i can't wait to get more into that later but yeah chopper and law work together law and robin they work together uh, actually quick aside i would love it if robin and law got together at the end of the series is that is that agenda piece am i agenda piecing or is that just shipping i don't i don't care i think they work well together and i mean they have some pretty good funny moments together too i'm sure even law and frankie have some good moments well i can only think of one actually and that's in punk hazard where luffy has just jumped out of the cage again like just a lunatic while law is explaining what the plan is for what they should do going forward luffy just jumps out he doesn't care he's just he's a crackhead on a mission but after that when frankie's like you should have known this would have happened by the way can i go look for the sunny and law's like I, I don't care i'm trying to figure out what this guy's doing so then frankie jumps out of the cage and farts his way to the thousand sunny like literally his farts are propelling him to the ship i just can't imagine law was looking at that and thinking anything other than what have I gotten myself into? Another honorable mention has to be Zoro and Sanji. Like, we don't see much of them interacting with each other, like just them, mainly because, you know, they hate each other or they're gay for each other. I really don't know. I like, I don't really like, I don't, that's not my agenda piece or my ship or whatever. I don't think that they're actually like have romantic feelings for each other, but you gotta admit, there are some moments that's a, it's a little bit Naruto and Sasuke. You know what I'm saying? The fact that Sanji's like this charismatic ladies man that will do anything to put women on this pedestal. And he is at the same time terrified of the Okama because he might like dressing up as a woman. And also in that same vein, I've never seen Zoro like more scared than when Sanji almost kissed him when he was dreaming because he thought that Zoro was Nami when they were sleeping right next to each other. There's a lot of moments, okay? There's a lot of sus moments. But with all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started with my number five pick for the best straw hat comedic groups. And my number five pick has got to be Brooke and Whole Cake Island. Just Brooke and everybody else in Whole Cake Island, honestly. But my main, if I had to narrow it down to just three, I would pick Brooke, Nami, and Sanji. 
look, look, Brooke is hilarious. I know if you watched the other video, I think I ranked him number seven. It might not seem like I think he's that funny. Nonsense. All the Straw Hats are hilarious. And like I said before in my last video, I would definitely watch a, a stand-up routine from all of them. But Brooke and Sanji have a bond, okay? They are hilarious and they're both perverts. A standout moment for me is when they're on Punk Hazard and Sanji's in Nami's body. And Brooke and Sanji run off on their own to save the day. And Brooke's like, yeah, yeah, we're going to save the day. We're going to do all the things. But first, for real, you should definitely show me your panties. So unserious. And Sanji is more than willing to provide. And they're like, yeah, we'll do that. We should also find a camera too. It's just those two are always on the same wavelength and I need to see more of them together. You know what I mean? But also Brooke and Nami are a comedic group as well. Nami is just the one person willing to beat up anybody on the crew. So it's always funny whenever she does that. But Brooke is one of the people that just for sure probably needs to get his ass whooped every now and then by Nami. You know how weird it is to meet a burping and farting skeleton that's constantly asking Asking you to show him your panties. That is, you, you might need to beat that guy up sometimes. But what's even more funny is again in Whole Cake Island. This is my favorite, all, this might be my favorite all time Brooke moment other than Bone Bone Chop and Zo. But when Brooke and Nami are on the ship and they're sailing away from like something happening in Whole Cake Island and one of Big Mom's daughters shows up. I forget who this person is called even, but it's, uh, what is her name actually? This is gonna bug me. Um, she's, she's the big thick daughter. You know who I'm talking about, all right? I'm gonna put her up on the screen. But when she shows up, she's in her own ship and this is what keep in mind this is a really stressful situation that everybody's in so brooke and nami and i think chopper's there too but they're on the sunny wall it, you know ships are being sunk all around them like big mom's fleet is closing in on them and brooke sees big mom's daughter on that ship miles away and he's like oh hang on i'll handle this sumimasen show me your panties and nami just decks him because again i don't in that situation that is hilarious but also it's like dude what come on man please be serious and what's even more funny is that in that same arc brooke was going crazy he was sinking ships left and right in that same situation and he even earlier went toe-to-toe -to -toe with big mom like obviously he didn't win but it's still incredible that he can do that and still manage to be so damn funny but yeah that's why it's my number five pick because it's mainly just brooke being the most ridiculous person than I've ever seen. But Nami and Sanji, they elevate that too. So I definitely want to give their comedic groups number five and we can keep going with the list. So my number four for best straw hat comedic groups is going to be Chopper with all of the guys. Chopper has really amazing chemistry with everyone on the crew, honestly. But he's funniest to me whenever he's hanging out with his big brothers. Like Chopper's so cute. He's always so interested in like learning about the world and he's just so like naive. It's just always awesome. A standout moment for just Chopper specifically for me recently is right after they got out of Wano and Chopper Chopper just comes out to see the waterfall that Bonnie stuck in and Chopper comes out and he's like, what's up? Onigashi, my hat Chopper here. What's going on? And he's just so proud. He's so cute. I love Chopper so much. Moving on to why he's so funny in a group with like Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, and Luffy. Listen, there's so many examples I can pull from. Like I said in the other video, there's the gag of whenever Nami is scaring him and Chopper just freaks out and jumps in the water. And, and this happens in like the background of a scene. Zoro jumps in after him to save him. But Chopper is the most funny whenever he's commenting on how stupid his older brothers are. Like, do you guys remember in Eni's lobby when they're all trying to get to the roof to save Robin? And so everybody's running up the stairs. But if you watch that scene again, watch. Everyone's going up the stairs. Zoro runs off away from the stairs and it's Chopper who reacts first. He's like, huh? Oh my God, Nami, look, Zoro's running in the opposite direction. He got lost going up a flight of stairs. That scene kills me every time. And another scene that kills me every time is Chopper in Fishman Island. Because if you remember, the beginning of Fishman Island sees Sanji just nose bleeding to death. And Chopper takes this so seriously. Chopper's like, Sanji, please, you gotta stop. If you keep looking at these pretty mermaids, you're gonna lose too much blood. You're gonna die. And though it would be funny because you would be the only person in anime who would literally die from nose bleeding. Bleeding. I just, we don't want, we don't want that to happen. I don't want to see that. All the while, Chopper is reminding Sanji, think about your dream. And Sanji's like, you're right, my dream to see a mermaid. And Chopper's like, no, your dream is the all blue, Sanji. Focus, pay attention. Because here's the thing, Sanji's nose bleeding gag in Fishman Island, like that would not have been nearly as funny without Chopper handling that with the utmost seriousness. And nobody else cares. Everybody is just like, wow. I don't know. We're not going to take you to the hospital because if we do, you're not going to learn anything. I don't want this to happen when we go to the next arc. And I don't even think I need to explain how funny Chopper is with Usopp, but spoiler alert, I'm going to get to that a little bit later on in this list, okay? But 
uh, so let's talk about Chopper and Luffy. Chopper and Luffy is hilarious because just the same way you could just imagine like a kid brother following around his older brother that is just a dangerously unhinged crackhead. Chopper makes situations cuter than they need to be and Luffy is just running around punching everybody. It's it's hilarious. But Chopper's also not above calling Luffy stupid when he's stupid. A standout moment for me is in Sky Island once again when everybody is going off in their own direction to go find gold or fight God. And Luffy calls Zoro out like, Zoro, we need to be going this way. That's the wrong direction. This is east. We need to go that way. And Zoro's like, Luffy, you're crazy, all right? We need to go in the opposite direction of the south bird. The opposite direction of south is north. So we have to go this way, and that should take us east. And Chopper the whole time is standing in the background like, east? That they're Neither of them are going east. What are they talking about? And Robin's just like, just, just let them... Just let them do what they're doing. It's hilarious. I love Chopper, and he's the star of this comedic grouping, but him with all of the guys, it's never not going to make me laugh. Now let's move it on up to my number three pick for best Straw Hat comedic groups. Now for my number three pick, that's got to go to the Punk Hazard 4. Now I didn't get to touch on this too much in my video, Punk Hazard is hilarious, but I'm thrilled to finally get into this. So listen to me. Luffy, Zoro, Robin, and Usopp traveling Punk Hazard initially has got to be one of the funniest parts in all of One Piece. Like, I need you guys to really wrap your head around this, okay? They are traveling on on an island that is both on fire and frozen, right? And then they encounter a dragon with a pair of severed legs that can communicate to you by farting. And upon seeing this, Luffy's immediate reaction is to take these severed legs and attach them to his own torso. And he's like, I'm Minotaur Luffy now. No questions, no, none of that. In fact, Zoro slays the dragon. Luffy and Zoro roast the dragon that they have just murdered on the fire that has been engulfing the island since they got there. And they have a little lunch break, right? right there. The whole time Usopp is the straight man, like, listen, we sh uh, we shouldn't be eating that, and why aren't we asking more questions about the severed pair of legs we just found? So when they get to the river that separates the frozen part of the island from the island that's on fire, and Robin does her thing where she lets her imagination run wild, and this time she's imagining Usopp and Zoro ferrying Luffy and Robin across the river. She's imagining them carrying Luffy and herself across the river like they're in one of those boats in France. And Usopp obviously is just like, I I'm not becoming a boat in this frozen river. It's like negative 23 degrees out here. How cold do you think it is in the water? And he looks over and Zoro's already ready to go in. I think he even took his shirt off and it's like, why are you Why are you doing this? So they eventually make it across, but then they meet this guy called Brownbeard, I think was what he was called. And so when Brownbeard shows up, all of the lunatics in the Punk Hazard 4, so that's Robin, Zoro, and Luffy, still wearing the farting severed legs that he got from that dragon that he killed, they start beating up all the Minotaur people with the express purpose of stealing their warm clothing. It's hilarious. They're a band of Roman lunatics with the only straight man in the group is Usopp. Their talents are truly through the roof. Like, I can't wait to see them in the story going forward. Like, I really hope Oda creates another Punk Hazard 4 situation and just lets those idiots run wild. But with that, let's move it on up to my number two pick for the best Straw Hat comedic groups. And I, I think this one is a sleeper because I'm giving the number two spot to Sanji, Usopp, and Luffy. Now, I covered this a little bit in Skypea's Hilarious Part 1, but Sanji, Usopp, and Luffy on that cloud ferry boat thing that they were in while they're going to the sacrificial altar to save their friends, that is some of the funniest parts in all of One Piece. From Usopp and Luffy impersonating Sanji and Zoro all the way to their fight with Hattori and the ball ordeal, this just it's just top tier comedic moments. Their banter is amazing. Like Sanji periodically goes from being the serious person invested in the situation because he sees the people that he's with. He's like, if I'm not serious, none of us are serious, so I gotta do something. But then Sanji falls back on some of his more goofy antics, like talking about like this is an ordeal of love and we gotta save our beautiful navigator Nami Swan and Robin Chwon. Don't really care about the rest, we just gotta make sure those two were okay specifically. And then when it gets to the ball ordeal and Sanji's still trying to take things seriously and Luffy is still not taking anything seriously. If you'll remember, Hatari's power with the ball ordeal is that some of the balls explode. So Luffy's strategy for getting out of that fight is to just punch all the balls, punch everything. He's punching everything and he causes several explosions to go off. Some of them go off right on top of Sanji, taking him out of the fight until the very end. So then when Sanji finally does show up at the end of the fight to deliver his French kick to end the fight, Luffy's dying dialogue is like, oh, Sanji, I, I thought you were dead. And Sanji's like, it's because of you, you unhinged, crazy lunatic, that I almost did die. But yeah, I highly encourage you to watch Skypiea over again, or at least those parts, because their banter is just top tier, one of the funniest parts in all of the series. And it truly does have so much comedic potential. And speaking of comedic potential, my number one pick for best Straw Hat comedic groups might surprise you, or you might have seen it coming. I'm giving the number one spot for best Straw Hat comedic groups to our weakling trio. And this isn't just because of their 
their hilarious antics and thriller bark. It's also because narratively, there's a lot of potential for them to really do something strong. Nami, Usopp, and Chopper going on an adventure with just the three of them. Like the Straw Hats aren't going to show up and just bail them out of any situation. They have to get themselves out of a situation. That has been one of the things I've wanted to see happen for a long time. In my head, I always see it like a Sly Cooper-esque adventure. And so really walk with me here for a second. The Cooper gang, but it's Nami, Usopp, and Chopper. So that means Nami is obviously Sly Cooper. She's jumping around doing the thief stuff, using her whimsical female charms to get what she wants. Usopp is Bentley, setting explosives and trying to think his way out of every situation he finds himself in. And Chopper is the Murray, someone who is at once the muscle and also hilariously naive enough to maybe even get in the way of the plot a little bit. But he always moves the plot forward and we always welcome everything he's gonna do. Like, it feels like cheating a little bit, placing the weakling trio up this high because, like, you know, we've only technically seen them in Thriller Bark together. But Usopp and Nami have had plenty of hilarious moments, just the two of them, as well as Usopp and Chopper, as well as Chopper and Nami. Like, they have some really great moments separate from the three of them together. And when we have the three of them together, it was just gold in Thriller Bark. Even though for me, like, Thriller Bark, I've got some mixed feelings because on the one hand, there's a lot of funny moments, like Luffy putting the zombie back into the ground. I didn't mention that in my uh, previous video where I ranked the Straw Hats based on how funny they are, but Luffy putting the zombie back in the ground, why, why did he do that? That is so funny. The zombie even jumps up out of the ground, like, why did you do that? What? Why did you do that? But there are some parts of Thriller Bark that I don't like. Sanji, for instance, he goes full pervert, and it's like, you never go full pervert, dude. You gotta, you gotta temper that a little bit, you know? But the scene that I really don't like in Thriller Bark is when Nami is in the bath, and then that invisible pervert shows up and starts doing all that creepy stuff that he's doing. That scene went on way too long for me, and I was just uncomfortable throughout the whole thing. And then Oda follows that up with an Usopp gag. Like, when uh, Usopp runs in the bathroom to see what's wrong with Nami, he sees Nami's chest is all out, and he's like, oh, wow, thank you. He bows cartoonishly, and he's like, thank you very much for showing me that. And it's just like, like I said, I was really uncomfortable with what was going on, so when that happened and he followed it up with the gag, I was a little bit frustrated. But also, at the same time, I had it. I don't know. I'd be lying if I didn't say I've had that exact same reaction as seeing some boobs. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like every guy can relate. You've, you ever, like, get some surprise boobies in your face and you're like, wow, thank you very much. It's like, I... I don't know. I've been there. All right. I still hate the scene. And I don't, I'm not saying I agree that, you know, you follow that up with a new sop gag. All I'm saying is I've, I've, I, that would be how I would react to seeing Nami's boobs. Surprise. Like if you gave me some surprise boobies, that is exactly how I would react. And it's like, in a way, that's a testament to how funny the weakling trio even is. You can take me from being at once just so uncomfortable with something and then bring me right back to relatability. Like, yeah, you know, Good for him, he saw some boobs. I just think that their narrative potential and comedic potential for the three of them is through the roof, and I really hope Oda gives us that in the future. I hope they give us an arc where it's just the three of them and they're going crazy and it's funny and it's amazing, but also does some really strong character things for the three of them because we all know they need it. The three of them desperately need some character moments in this story. And as serious as the story goes on, I, just, I don't know. I don't know if I have the faith that they definitely will get their moments. So I think an easy way for them to all get their moment, just give them a Sly Cooper adventure. Let it be about stealing something. Put Nami in charge and just set them free. It's going to be funny and we're going to watch it, Oda. Please give us that. But there you have it, guys. My picks for the best Straw Hat comedic groups. Please let me know in the comments if you agree or if you would move some things around or if there are some comedic groups that I might have overlooked in this list. I mean, it's definitely possible. There's like 10 of those lunatics. So I'm really excited to read the comments for this one. Let me know what you guys think. But that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for being interested. And I cannot wait to see you in the next one.